Okay, it's uh, September 11th, 2011, and uh, Sunday afternoon. We're looking at the back of the RCA VTA 250L transmitter, AM transmitter. Runs a pair of 810s for the final, a pair of 828s for the modulator. It's a 250 watt transmitter. And uh, kind of scroll down here and kind of show you what everything looks like in the back. And what we did is we retuned this for 160 meter band. And right there, that little plug coming out of where the crystal oscillator is, the crystal has been removed and we uh, installed the WA1FFL Jim Haggerty uh, buffer driver amplifier. Let me kind of show you around the other side here. It's the back of the uh, audio processing equipment. There's the studio console. It's a Harris Stereo 5 with a Shure microphone. And in front of this big jewel kind of gives you an idea of the how big this thing is. Enormous beauty built by RCA in 1947. Note all the instrumentation on the front panel. Also the adjustments and the circuit breakers. And now I'm going to give a test run. Got a one second delay. Take a look at the instruments again. Buffer plate right where it should be, about 26 milliamps. 85 on the plate on the buffer. Uh, roughly 85 or so on the power amp grid, 230 milliamps on the plate, right and left, there's your plate voltage, about 1300 volts, there's your modulators uh, idling at about 20 milliamps, that's good, and about 3.2 uh, milliamps on the audio uh, driver tubes. And of course the line voltage looks like it's just over 110 volts. So we'll go ahead and uh, right now we're transmitting it into a, a dummy load. And uh, we can see, I'm uh, actually speaking into the microphone right now. We can see the left and right milliamps on the power amp on the modulator operating. And uh, we'll take a look at the scope shot on the uh, output of the RF sampling. We've got a little RF sampling going on. So there you have it, the signal. Uh, what we're doing to prevent overload, we've got some uh, audio processing gear here. We've got an Ultra Gain Behringer microphone preamp for the sound. And uh, we're using a, a Yamaha com compressor limiter to keep from overdriving. And then uh, sound goes from the microphone into the tube preamp, which is the Behringer, into the compressor limiter. Uh, then it goes over here into the studio console. As you can see, the meters are uh, kind of going right where they need to be, just a little bit in the red to give a good good uh, sound out of the uh, transmitter. I'm monitoring in the background with an ICOM 706. And, uh, well, there you have it. Uh, she's alive. She's back to life. Lives once again. The, the mighty 1947 BTA 250L built by RCA. Y'all have a good one. We're signing off. KB7 OCY. We're going to be signing off. Been a little bit of heat going on that dummy load, so we'll go ahead and shut down for a couple minutes. I wanted to mention that it's uh, fully VFO controlled, and the signal you were looking at was a. Uh, 1.9 megahertz in the 160 meter band um, being generated by the WA1 FFL digital VFO designed by uh, Jim Haggerty. So if you're looking for something to drive uh, that rig of yours, this thing will do it. We did some modifications to this. We uh, installed a 
antenna uh, receive transmit switch with a dummy load. The dummy load resistors can be seen on the left there. The selector is right here. This uh, uh, test switch is for the dummy load. And when you open that and close this one, it uh, sends a signal to the antenna. So for test purposes, we leave it in a dummy load position. Uh, hook up there for your receiver, hook up for the scope, and auxiliary dummy if so desired. And as we look down the uh, back of the transmitter, uh, we can see that we have the soft start circuitry installed here, which has a uh, time delay relay set for one second. Cool thing about this, if I want to do some tuning and pre-tuning, I just uh, adjust this little thumb wheel for several hundred seconds and it runs about 25% power. So it turns on at 20% power, 25% power or so, and after one second uh, it goes to full power. So that was kind of a couple mods we put in here. And uh, that's, that uh, should help the plate transformer surge and that kind of thing. So, Because normally this type of equipment is designed to go on and stay on, but uh, in the amateur world we like to, to shut it off once in a while so we can listen to what the other guy's saying. So anyway, uh, another look at the back. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. See all the work that's went in the, the full restoration on the uh, inside of the chassis on this on this beautiful machine. Anyway, with that note, I'm going to sign off again. Enjoy. I hope you enjoy this. It's been a one heck of a project. Many, many hours, but we got her done, and it's working.